Hi, I'm Rachel Durstein. I'm going to show you today how to make this beautiful winter nighttime landscape. It's very, very simple. I can show you step by step how to make this piece. The background is only two pieces of fabric stitched together. I will show you how to fuse the trees and the moon on to the background. I will show you how to quilt it. I've chosen a cool color palette and I would encourage you to do the same. And if you would like a pattern for this quilt, just check the link below and you can download and print out um, a specific pattern for this quilt that you can use if you would rather work that way. So without wasting any more time, let's get right to making this quilt. Okay, so the fabric I've chosen for my trees are these kind of cool colors. And so what you have to do is cut some chunks of fabric out and you're gonna lay them right side down. So the wrong side up. And I have some parchment paper here. And do not get dollar store parchment paper. It does not work. It'll totally stick to your fabric and you won't be able to get it off. The point of the parchment paper is to protect your ironing surface. And, um, oh, and then this, um, Michael Miller Fairy Frost is my moon fabric. It's very beautiful. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put Misty Fuse on the back of these. First, I'm gonna iron these wrinkles out and just make sure they're really, really flat. Okay, I get Misty Fuse by the roll. You can get it in packages of, I think, I think it's 10 feet. So, um, you, I will have a link down below so that you can order it online. Uh, a lot of good quilt shops have it in packages. Okay, and I'm gonna have a little too much waste here. I'm gonna trim some off. So I'm not wasting so much. So I'm going to trim this little bit off. Whoops. Okay. So you lay this on top of your fabric. I have three pieces on here ready to roll. And one thing I do have to be careful of is that this edge, the misty fuse is really close, is going over the parchment, but hopefully I won't stick it to the ironing board. Okay, this is protecting your iron as well. If you don't use this and if you go off the edge, see where you have Misty Fuse sticking out and that gets on your iron, you're going to get a very gunky iron. And I always manage to do that. So um, I have iron cleaning stuff handy. To clean my iron whenever I need to and it, it actually is very often now you can do this with no steam in your iron or I didn't bother taking the water out so I do have steam in here but of course with the parchment paper there's no point in steam but anyway okay and you can just kind of see that it's melting the misty fuse Get all the edges of your fabric, but don't go out over the edge of the parchment paper. Okay. And this is where, in a lot of classes, the irons get really messed up and the ironing surfaces get really messed up. So there are many products available that you can protect your uh, ironing surface with. I think one is called the goddess sheet and there's silicone sheets. And, uh, but I just use good old parchment paper. So it looks like this from the grocery store. Um, Reynolds brand parchment paper. It's for using on your cookie sheets, but it works for this as well. Okay, so here's our parchment paper sandwich. We're taking it off. And this 
side. Should come off nice and easy. There you go. When you wait till it's cool, it's not hard at all to get it off. If you're impatient, sorry about the noise, and uh, you try to get it off too soon, you're gonna have a big mess. So what I just do is go around and cut all the misty fuse off. And you don't have to be precise about this at all, but just, you know, get the extra stuff off. So here's your piece, it's ready to cut out. Cut all these pieces out. One's ready to go. Like that. And you throw these pieces of Misty Fuse away. Now, these are ready to go. They're beautiful. They're ready to go. So, let me just show you how I cut. one of these trees. Okay. It's kind of big. There you go. And the bottom should be squared off a little bit. Okay. There's one of your trees. That's going to look great. Okay, now I wouldn't have two trees exactly the same shape necessarily out of the same fabric. So let me show you how I do one of the lollipop trees. You can just, you make your stem, go on the back side and just draw your stem, your trunk, it's a tree. <laughs> okay, and um, some of these are Kind of like a tulip shape so just draw it and the nice thing about drawing it on the back is if if you don't like how it looks you can change it like I don't think that was very straight on my part so I'm gonna just kind of make it come over this way a little more okay and then you start cutting and if you want to use a tiny rotary cutter, you can. You might have better luck going around your, your little angles. I'm using kind of a big one here. Okay, so there's a lollipop tree, but kind of more like a tulip shape. All right, and you can take a little, here's one of my tiny, rotary cutters. If you want to go around these tight curves a little better, you can use the tiny rotary cutter. It works a little better. You have a little more ability to manipulate things. Okay? So you start cutting out your trees. Here I've cut a piece that I want for my night sky and I cut a little dip in the landscape there. You can see. I just cut one piece of fabric first because I think it's easier that way. And then here we have the, um, the snowy landscape, and I cut it once, but my video camera was set too close, so I'm going to do it one more time and let you see how I cut it. Okay, so this is a nice snowy landscape with um, a nice texture to it. So I'm just going to cut directly beside what I cut before. So I'm just taking a nice brand new blade in my rotary cutter because I don't want any bumps and little spots that don't cut. There you go. And so what I cut off, what I shaved off was a little piece like that. So now what I'm going to do, you don't have to do this, but um, I like to pin just a few spots on the fabric to make sure that it begins and ends in the right spot. So you're gonna stitch this at a quarter with a quarter inch seam. So just ease it. You don't wanna tug and stretch and pull at all. You just wanna ease it. And you'll think, oh my, 
It's never going to come out flat. You're going to worry about it. I remember the first time I did this, I just thought it was just so bizarre that you could sew these curved, you could cut these curved seams and they would actually come out right. We'll see if they do. Um, but yeah, they're working out. Okay. So one more pin here. Just kind of ease it. Look at my fingers. They're very dry, so my fabric isn't moving the way I want it to. And this might move a little bit when you sew it. It might come out just slightly different, but the pins are just kind of a gauge to keep it looking like you want it to, okay? So we're gonna take this to the machine and sew a quarter inch seam. Okay, so we have our landscape background all pinned. I'm just using a regular um, number 37 foot for for Nina. It's just a regular quarter inch sewing foot. Okay, so here we go. We're going to stitch that together and I'm ticket, taking pins out as I go and I'm again I'm not tugging and pulling. I am just easing things, keeping them together. Okay. I'm stitching that. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, but, you know, close. Close to perfect is good. All right. So keep easing as you go. Sometimes the pins just kind of get annoying. So you can take them out as you go. You might find that there's a little bit too much ease on the top or too much on the bottom. But the pins were uh, just an approximation. So see how it beha behaves as you go. You can see I have a little bit extra ease on the top and that's not gonna matter at all. You'll be surprised at how good it actually comes out and then when you press it, it's gonna look perfect. All right, so there you have it. Let's do one of our nice little tabs there at the end. Okay, I forgot to do that at the beginning. So I have all this extra thread. So it's good to have a little tab there. All right, so you can see, I didn't press it yet, but you can see this landscape is actually lying really nice and flat. So I'm gonna go press that. Okay, so you can see that uh, this is laying down very, very flat. It looks really excellent. I pressed it all. Normally, um, light fabrics, you press the seam away, but because this is a landscape and uh, you want some of the trees and things you're gonna use to be behind the hill, it's gonna work better if you press the seam down toward the light side so that you have the sky side on the bottom. I don't know if you understand that, but you'll see later. So press the black fabric down toward the white fabric. Just all one direction, and then it all lays really nice and flat. The next thing we're gonna do is to screen the snowflakes on with paint. Okay, so we're going to actually make the moon uh, and pin it to the piece so that I know where not to put my snowflakes first. Okay, for the moon, I decided to use this beautiful um, white pearlized fairy frost. It's fairy frost, I think it's Michael Miller uh, fabric. And of course, I, did, I put Misty Fuse, just like you saw at the beginning, uh, on the back of it so it's ready to fuse on. And really simple, I used this old piece of um, spool of masking tape to cut out my, my moon. So I'm gonna go on the back side of the fabric and I'm gonna use my pencil or pen, whatever you have handy, and just trace around that. This is not a perfect circle. This piece of tape has some bumps in it, but you can 
you can smooth those out when you're cutting. So take your rotary, rotary cutter and just cut along that line and maybe cut just slightly inside so you don't get the mark. It might show through to the front since it's white fabric. So you might want to cut just slightly right inside that mark. Okay. And you're going to, I like to have a nice big moon. I don't know, there's something really peaceful about seeing a nice big moon. Okay. So then we have our landscape and I just kind of loosely pinned it to the batting just because sometimes when you're doing screen printing, ideally you would have a nice soft surface that you could really tightly pin these into, but I think this is going to be enough for what I'm doing here. Now I want to, this is my screen. And uh, I ordered this from Lyric Montgomery Kennard. She has a website uh, with, I'll put a link below. And it, she has this really nice screen with all different kinds of snowflakes on it. So you can order that from her. You can order a smaller size if you want to. These are kind of big. But one thing about this is that all the snowflakes are really close together. So if you look at my original piece, I screened these snowflakes on and I tried to screen each one separately, but you will see that I have little spots where some extra paint got on beside the snowflake I was trying to screen. And I had little blotches. You'll see little blotches here, um, little places where there's like a quarter of a snowflake. And to be honest, I placed these trees on here strategically to cover up all those mistakes. So that's a little trick you can remember. I think the next time that I'm screening here in front of you, what I'm gonna do is cover up some of the spots with uh, a piece of paper so that it doesn't go where it's not supposed to. So let's get this moon situated right where we want it. So we know not to put a snowflake there and then come back in a second and I'll have my paper ready to protect this quilt and I'll have my paint out and we'll get this painted. Okay, so I have my screen here with my little dollop of paint on it. I'm using Pro Chemical and Dye, bright white. Uh, this is a little three ounce container of Profab pearlescent paint. Okay, it's, it's really great. And you have to stir it up. It says stir well before using. So you stir it up so you get that pearlescent running through it. So I have my space protected a little bit. Um, and I'm going to screen one of these snowflakes on here. Okay, so I get that paint going over the area that I want to screen. And I'm, she cut a little piece out here because one of the little parts of the snowflake was sticking out into the taped area. Okay, I've got one there. And I can see I already have a little smudge of uh, paint on the sky there. It didn't go very well. So we'll just try another one. We're just gonna keep trying till we get it right. Um, okay, I'm gonna protect this area here. All right, so we're gonna do one snowflake right there and get some paint on there. Whoop. Screen that little snowflake. Whoop. There we go. That one turned out great. Okay, and then I want another little one over here. So let's protect this moon and see if I can squeeze one in right there. Maybe, I don't want one that's too big. This one would be perfect. Okay. So get some paint on there. See, this is a little more tricky than just having one image on a screen. I got some on the, um, the paper towel there, so it's good I had it there. I have a funny story to tell you. You're gonna see two quilts up here 
And that's because I had to make a whole new one because I made a huge mistake. I set the tripod for my video camera right on the table of my long arm to video the quilting part. And then I did the whole thing. And then I checked the video. I thought I knew what I was doing, but I discovered that the video was jumping around all over the place because of course my table was vibrating. So I had to redo the quilt. I didn't have any more of this background fabric. So I substituted with a couple pieces of gray and white that I had. So I made a second video. So please don't let it confuse you. When you see the videos of all the quilting, it's going to be on this quilt, which is slightly different and smaller and not, not as great as this quilt. I don't know, some of you might like it even better. But anyway, that's why there's a different quilt being quilted on the long arm but the rest of the video is going to be this quilt or, surprise, surprise, another quilt that I made similar to this one. It takes a lot of work to make a video, okay? Um, so anyway, I just wanted to explain that I made a huge mistake. The reason you're seeing a couple different quilts is because I had to do a redo, okay? So those of you who are perfectionists out there, rest assured it's okay to make mistakes and you can find ways around them and you can fix them okay so enjoy the rest of the video i have stitched in the ditch along this horizon line those two lines right there and now i'm going to show you how to do the loops on the sky i'm going to start over on this edge secure my stitches And here we go. part kind of empty because that's where my moon is going to be. I thought with this shape of landscape the moon looks better over on the right side. So now I'm going to show you how to do the uh, landscape. So I'm stopping at the edge of this hill here and I'm going to stitch along the stitch in the ditch part and then I'm going to come back up the hill. Sort of a curvy line. I will do some horizontal lines along the top of this hill, but just like in the other piece, um, I'm going to do some vertical stuff that looks a little bit like marsh grass. So let me try that.
Okay, so I finished all my vertical lines here, and now I'm going to do a little bit of a um, an Asian water design that looks really nice and peaceful. So just watch. I fused this down uh, with a hot iron at the ironing board and now I'm going to do a blanket stitch and on my Bernina that stitch is I believe one three three oh yep that's correct okay and we're going to come in here I also have my um, walking foot on so that everything behaves well okay so when you're starting you want your feed dogs down to to um, hold the stitches down at the beginning so you're going to do a pick up the bobbin thread okay and actually you should set it to one to start I'm sorry okay and do some stitches right in place just to kind of tack it down so that it doesn't go anywhere and then you can lift your feed dogs back up, put your blanket stitch in, which again is one, three, three, oh. There you go, you have the blanket stitch and you're gonna get started. So I wanna kinda have things looped up here. All right, here we go. And you might need to adjust just a little bit to make sure that the vertical stitch of the blanket stitch is right on the edge of your moon. You also don't want to have any drag on your fabric. You don't want to have any of it laying down, dragging down and pulling with weight down because it'll affect the length of your stitches. You want everything to be really, really even. You have to turn it as you go. And just keep the turning really gentle. And I see I have some junk. I, I'm not a very neat person. I have a lot of junk on my table. Anyway. All right. I actually sometimes do this before I quilt it but I thought for you it would be easier to quilt and then put this on so this is a little different than how I usually do it I didn't want you to have to have your um, loops of your sky interrupted by this moon so that's why I'm doing it this way right now okay so your blanket stitch is going to show all the way on the back hopefully you won't mind that and I think it's perfectly fine All right, and then at the end, when you get to the end, um, you're gonna wanna push your number one stitch again, your straight stitch, lower the feed dogs, 
and do some stitches right in place and just maybe move it slightly i can see my thread is starting to fray just a tiny bit there so we ended just in time sometimes you know if you don't have a brand new needle in or something the thread will fray a little bit but i, I even use i do use this thread on my long arm and it behaves really remarkably well so here you go. Here is my blanket stitch. I'm gonna show you a picture of it close up. Here's a close up of the blanket stitch. It looks really good. You can see underneath where I had a loop that I had to cover up, but that's okay. No one's gonna care. Quilted landscape here and we're just going to start adding trees to it and you know if you're like me and you made some smudges of of uh, snowflakes on your on your landscape that you don't want people to see you just take your tree and you cover it up now i would not fuse any of these down until you have your whole arrangement made okay um maybe just pin where you want it because you're going to at the end you're going to want to rearrange everything okay so i've got my arrangement so that i like it pretty much the colors are spaced out all the colors that match are not next to each other um, they're not too parallel in their arrangement um, and of course Knowing me, see I had a little blooper here, which I strategically cut um, this piece and put it right there so that it wouldn't, so that it would hide it, okay? And this tree I have right smack dab against the horizon, so it looks like it's peeking out from behind the horizon. So I'm going to take this to my ironing board and fuse everything down, but... I'm afraid the pieces are going to fall off, so I'm going to pin them down before I move my piece. Okay. Just pin them so you, you kind of know where they are. They don't have to stay exactly. In the right spot and make sure they're level. You know, you don't want to end up with something sitting crooked, so make sure they are level. They look straight up and down. Okay. And we are going to fuse these and then we're going to stitch around the edges. This one looks a little crooked to me. Okay, there we have it. Oops, forgot one. Here we go. Get that one. Now I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board and I'm gonna fuse everything down and then I'm going to load it on my long arm and start stitching with some beautiful thread. Okay, so here you can see uh, the stitches of the background landscape. I'm sorry I didn't do this before um, ap uh, fusing the uh, trees onto the background. See the up and down stitching I did on that marsh grass area and the hills and then kind of the watermark down at the bottom it just gives it a peaceful calm kind of feeling and then up here are the loop-de-loops that i did on the sky i just wanted you to see that close up and i now also realize that i did not paint the little um little tiny dots of paint to make it look like the snow is falling so i'll have to do that later so we've made the background of the quilt we've pieced it we've quilted it we've stitched on the moon with that beautiful blanket stitch i also want to teach you how to make a beautiful embroidered signature that you can sew onto the back so we will completely finish this quilt in the next video